was one of the first braceros to come to the U.S. of A. during World War II. The U.S. made a deal with Mexico to bring in uh, workers, and it was fortunate because he met my mom on one of those early jaunts over here. When he finished his bracero stint, he was taken back to Mexico, and he wanted to come back. He came back illegally with no papers. My mom was always instrumental in figuring out how to smuggle him across the border. And very many times I remember hiding him in the car, putting my feet over his body as he lay up where our feet were. And once in a while he'd get caught at the border. And it was always a very tense, dark time for me, my early years. We were never allowed to speak to outsiders about anything because my mom was afraid we bring interest to the house and then they discover my dad. And it was during the time when there was no work because it was raining so much and he'd hide out in the garage and that's when he would weave on his frame loom and that's when I would hang out with him. So this piece I wove for him, I used the image from his immigration passport when he finally did get legal. I was 13, and it was in the early 60s when he finally got documented. And uh, he is the one that inspired me through his Wicho roots to weave. Herboso de la Frontera. This herboso was the first herboso I created. I've always loved the herboso. The herboso is a fabric that's very long and rectangular and it's used as a shawl. It can be used as a papoose to hold the baby. In the revolution, it was used to hide the rifle or the gun. It's a place that you can lay down in the desert as a blanket. Ever since I learned how to weave in San Diego, I wanted to weave one, but I never saw a way to enter that world as art. But then I started thinking, well, let's make a, a rebozo for that indigenous woman that crosses the border and has no time to weave. I don't have time to sew either. I use safety pins to hem up my skirts when I need to sew it. Safety pins, oh, oh, that's the contemporary way to sew. And no matter how much they infiltrate the society, they will always be on the radar of that INS. How do I put that in there? Oh, um, just millions of little caution signs is is my code way of saying, if you're indigenous, you're always gonna be under the scrutiny of the border patrol. So I decided to combine these ideas of no time, always on somebody's radar, and functional versus non-functional. And so it's a wearable, but it's obviously a wall piece. But to me, it's a marker that stands for woman, culture, and the struggle to survive. Marcos A. Underwood, yes, 14 years old. I was a freshman. The Beatles had already broken through. My sister and I went to the library, and then these punk kids, you know, guys, started following me around the, the halls of the library, you know, hey, what's your name, Barbara? And I noticed that one guy, he was just sitting on the table reading a book. And I went, what's with that? How come he's not chasing me? Cosuelo was a, a very beautiful young, young, young lady when she appeared in Calexico. And that meeting in that uh, library, uh, left me intrigued. At the freshman dance, it was the last dance of the year, I remember, oh my God, he's gonna ask me to dance. <gasps> wow! So he asked me to dance, and it was like we had already known each other for like 20 years, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Those kind of dances, right? So I danced with her all night long. I still remember that. It's one of the most memorable nights in my life. And I realized, I like him. He likes me. So at 15, I was I decided, okay, it's Marcos. So, next thing we knew, there we are, 50 years later. He always told me, that's all right, Tula. You don't have to work. Just take care of the kids in the house. I'll go to school first, and then when I graduate, then you can go to school. 
So that time came, he graduated. Now what am I gonna do? Whatever you want to, do whatever you want. That was pretty cool. I probably would not have gone to school and be an artist. I would have been a dentist or a dentist assistant or a secretary or whatever. I'm loading up the shuttle with wire. It's plastic coated wire, very flexible. And it's like a tough thread. That's, what it, that's how I think of wire, a, a thread that's tough. At San Diego State, it was all about form. It was about learning how to weave, how to traditionally use thread, and how to make an object. And then I went on to San Jose State, who said, oh my god, what's that all about? Who cares? It's the content, not the form. So how do I get content in a weaving? Hmm, materials. Well, my weavings are going to be tough. They're not going to be beautiful things. They're going to be tough. Wire. And that's like a thread. That's when this wire started. I just learned how to express myself as an artist and learn how to use materials to help me in my expression. And the expression that I would wanted to do was about me, Consuelo. Well, I'm tough. I like wires. I love silk, but I also like wires. And that's when I started weaving with wires and barbed wire. This place has been here thousands and thousands of years. It was sacred to the Pomo. It probably has a lot of forest spirits, animal spirits, and then the people that have lived here, you know, the, a lot of them love this place. They're still here. The ashes of several of the people that lived here are scattered in here. We needed to purchase another property, and we had a short period of time. I looked on the map. And the only Indian name I could see along the coast, it was either Spanish or English, but the only Indian name I found was Walala. So I told Kusa, let's go over there. We, we might be able to find something over there. And we came over one weekend. And I remember driving up the drive, I said, this is it. You do? Mm -hmm. Different people that you meet. Really? Um, friends, family. I thought love is forever. Only for you and Marcos. How long have you guys been together? A hundred years? I don't know, pal. We got it. We signed the oh paper in God. 68. Oh. <gasps> so how many is that? 40. That's what we're that's going on 50. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my word. The exhibition at the Triton Museum 2013 fall. It's pretty exciting because originally they wanted it to be a retrospective since I'm retired from San Jose as a professor. And the reason it came about was very interesting. I was in, we were, I was in a group Chicana kind of show of the Bay Area work and it's a Triton. And I made this wall of undocumented border flowers and that was like the hit of the show. And uh, I think because of that, they offered me the solo in three or four years' time. So I'm preparing all this work for that exhibition. And the flags have been with me since I was first grade. I pledged allegiance to the flag uh, of America. I've always thought about that flag. And when I cross the border to Mexicali, I think about the Mexican flag. Mexicanos, el grito. And so what I've been doing is merging the two flags as one. I think they're beautiful. I respect them. I love the safety pins. They look like a sea of people. The safety pin is one of the lowest, lowest elements in our society. But I love bringing the lowest into the highest realm of art hallways in the museums. To me, that's always been almost like church. It's like you flip the world around. You know, you play with, with, with ideas and understandings of your reality and mix it up. On this loom, I'm weaving a strip that is 30 feet long and it will be a wall installation at the Triton Museum. It will identify the borderline on the wall 
And so I'm, I'm mixing up the red, white, and blue and the red, white, and green of the Mexican flag, and that's gonna be throughout the whole piece. Uh, it's the mixed media weaving where I have the most fun. I make it up with each uh, throw, more or less, because these throws only last like two feet. This one in particular is made with the New York Times, uh, blue plastic wire, uh, a piece of uh, cut up raw uh, DuPont silk and uh, blue barbed wire that I had made earlier for another project. The white is made up of this plastic uh, raffia bandana scarf and some white cotton thread. This red was made with a cotton thread wire and a red silk bandana. So all these materials, I determine which one to use at the moment. And that's what's the most fun. It's very fast, it's very immediate, and um, in, in the end, it will also be very meaningful. The borderline is the actual line, if you look at a map, the line between Mexico and the United States of America. And it starts in California, it travels along Arizona to New Mexico, and it drops down into the peninsula of Texas. And I'm very focused on that line because that's the line where they want to put up the wall uh, that will separate the two nations. And for me, on each side of that wall, it's a dead zone that they're creating for all the wildlife, uh, the wild plants, the people even. Uh, but I'm more, at this point, if they don't care about people, well then how do we care about you know the bugs and the flowers? Um, and that we're creating a desert for our great grandkids when they grow up, that will be a dead zone. That line will be in 100 years a desert. And right now the desert is alive, but in 100 years that desert will be dead. In the beginning, my work was different because I was making artistic expression with threads, with fiber and then other people started working with that. But I found that my message was still different. Even today, I feel that I'm one of the few voices that is still talking specifically about the border and the ecological impact that that's having. I just know that uh, I need to talk about that.